But first, in the news, the Prime Minister of Canada says Wednesday's deadly shootings at the Parliament was a terrorist attack. The government was a recent convert to Islam. And now Canada and other Western countries are wondering if they can expect more savage terrorism in the days to come. Gary Lane brings us the story. Canadian police are investigating to determine if 32-year-old Canadian Michael Zahaf Babo acted alone or with others. Wednesday morning, Babo shot and killed Corporal Nathan Cirillo as he stood guard at the Tomb of the Unknown Soldier in Ottawa. Moments later, he stormed into the Parliament building with a blaze of gunfire before he was shot and killed by the sergeant at arms. Investigators now say they believe Babo was from Quebec and was a new convert to Islam. They say his passport was recently seized after he was designated a high risk traveler. Today, In a televised address to his nation, France. Canadian Prime Minister Stephen Harper said the attack was an act of terrorism. He gave a stern warning to other would be terrorists. But let there be no misunderstanding. We will not be intimidated. Canada will never. Be intimidated. President Obama did not directly call the shooting an act of terrorism, but he assured the public the United States will continue to work with Canada to thwart acts of violence and terrorism. Our national security teams are coordinating very closely, uh, uh, given uh, not only is Canada uh, one of our closest allies in the world, but uh, there are our neighbors and our friends. Wednesday's act of Islamic terror in Ottawa came just two days after another recent convert to Islam ran over two soldiers near Montreal. National security advisors and foreign policy experts on both sides of the border expect there will be more to come. I would not be surprised at all if there are more in Canada and across the West in general. Gary Lane, CBN News. It's shocking, ladies and gentlemen, but let me tell you one more time. Terrorism is at the heart of the teaching of the prophet Muhammad. It is buried deep into the Quran, and uh, it is there, and these people are not some offshoot. They are carrying out the message of their faith. Well, our CBN News terrorism analyst, Eric Stackelbuck, uh, is with us, and Eric, uh, what is going on? Why Canada? <clears throat> well, look, Pat, a few things here. Number one, remember, Canada is a Western nation. Now, a few weeks ago, an ISIS spokesman released an audio tape calling for attacks against Canadian, American, European, and Australian civilians and soldiers. Look, Canada has been part of the coalitions that have fought against Saddam Hussein and fought against jihadists in the Middle East. Pat, they're joining this new coalition against ISIS, so that puts a bullseye on Canada's back, without a doubt. And this is only the beginning, Pat. Really, this is the new normal. We will see more of these lone wolf, self-starter self type jihadist strike in Canada, in Europe, God forbid, here in America. I do believe this is a new day with the rise of ISIS. You know, we've had Fort Hood, the Boston bombers, the Times Square bomber over the past few years, Pat. But with the rise of ISIS, it's a new day. So many young Western Muslims and converts are responding to ISIS's call to jihad. And I fear that more and more people, like we saw yesterday, are going to carry out their own self-starter, one-man or one-woman jihad here on Western soil. Well, Eric, you know, Canada is one of the most welcoming countries to people of various faiths. They have not do, done, there's been no provocation whatsoever on the part of Canada against these people. Yeah, Pat, but it doesn't really matter because the ideology of jihad is all about world conquest. Even if if we get the way that, that some in our administration and others in Europe want just to leave the jihadists alone, leave them to their devices. Let Iran acquire a nuclear weapon, for example. They won't hit us. We're sadly mistaken to believe that because their ideology, look, Pat, you know this so well, terrorism is only a tactic. It is motivated by a jihadist Islamic ideology, and that ideology calls for global conquest. So it doesn't matter if Canada has never done a thing 
to any Islamic nation. It doesn't matter if Canada, Britain, the United States are welcoming to Muslim immigrants, allow them to build mosques throughout their country. It doesn't matter. That only makes the jihadists want to seize their territory more because at the end of the day, this is about conquest. They are at war with us. And although President Obama may not want to acknowledge it, we are in a war right now. And if we don't understand the ideology of the enemy, Pat, we cannot defeat that enemy. I can assure you they understand us and they know all of our weak points. Eric, uh, the <clears throat> FBI, as I understood, uh, took about a thousand pages out of their uh, terrorism manual identifying these Islamic people as the terrorists. And, and that was at the direction of the administration. Talk about that. It was. You know, Pat, this is a shame, too, because since 9-11, so many brave FBI field agents have done such great work breaking up terror plots, uh, apprehending ISIS recruits before they can move overseas. But here's the problem. The FBI bureaucracy and this administration have bowed not only to political correctness, but to Islamist pressure groups. We have these groups here in the U.S., Pat. They are quote-unquote Muslim American civil rights groups. We've exposed them here on CBN News. In reality, these are radical groups that are linked to the Muslim Brotherhood, the granddaddy of all jihadist groups. These groups have a radical agenda, yet they have the ear of the Obama White House. Therefore, we have a situation where the FBI has actually eliminated terrorist training ma uh, manuals that talk honestly about the caliphate, about jihad, about Islamic radicalism. You can't say the word Islam, Pat. It's only violent extremism this day, in, these days in the lexicon of this administration. This is a dangerous, dangerous thing, again, because it is willfully misleading the American people. The Obama administration is creating a climate where they're telling the Amer American people, look, we're only at war with Al Qaeda. This is not part of a larger global problem. Well, as we saw yesterday, the barbarians are not just at the gates. They are inside the gates. This is a global problem. And if we continue to refuse to acknowledge it, it's going to continue to bite us. We're going to see a lot more of these lone wolf, self-starter, one-man jihadist attacks on soft targets like we said, like we saw yesterday. You know, in Israel, I mean, in Egypt, there was an overthrow of the Muslim Brotherhood and al-Sisi took over. He's very much pro-Western and uh, pro-democracy, but he's being portrayed as some kind of a thug. And uh, it looks like the Obama administration wants to embrace <laughs> the Muslim Brotherhood, which is the founder of Hamas and, uh, you know, the other terrorist groups. What, what do you think about that? Pat, it is maddening. I can tell you, I have spoken over the past year to Egyptian officials who shake their head and say, what is your administration doing? I feel like I have to explain the Obama administration, which when it comes to foreign policy is not an easy thing to do. This administration has made a conscious choice to embrace the Muslim Brotherhood. Pat, if they had their chance, the Obama administration, they would push al-Sisi aside. Al-Sisi, who is friendly to the United States, who has had a very good relationship with Israel, they would push him aside and welcome the Muslim Brotherhood back with open arms. This administration believes that the Muslim Brotherhood are the good guys. They are the quote unquote moderate Islamist, Pat, as if such a thing as a moderate Islamist exists. But they are the moderates in the view of the Obama administration, and we can use the Brotherhood against ISIS and against Al Qaeda even though the Muslim Brotherhood spawned all of these groups. In the modern era, Pat, all of this jihad starts with the Brotherhood. They are the granddaddy of Al-Qaeda, ISIS, and without the Brotherhood, 9-11 would have never happened. Osama bin Laden, Khalid Sheikh Mohammed, all of the 9-11 masterminds came out of the Muslim Brotherhood. This is the gateway to Islamic terrorism, yet our administration says that they are reasonable chaps who we can deal with.